Hey everybody, Radamon here. Thanks for tuning in to Oxygen Not Included, episode 74. Last episode, we retooled our rocket. Not that I can show you, because it's currently on a space mission. But we retooled our rocket uh, to be able to travel the 40,000 kilometers and start doing missions on a new planet. This is a ice interstellar planet. Uh, we were also working on a cooling system. Uh, so this cooling system is going to use up quite a bit of our hydrogen. As I'm sure, yes, as you can see, the tanks are becoming depleted. I'm not that worried about it because we've transitioned away from using hydrogen as our sole power source. But uh, we are adding in some temp shift plates and then eventually maybe putting in some wheeze warts. And just to recap, the idea here is we will eventually do uh, oxygen treatment here. Basically cooling down the oxygen that we're going to pipe to the base until it hits a certain temperature. Exactly like our, um, our coolant loop. So if you take a look at the coolant loop. Uh, but instead of like an aqua tuner, uh, we are just going to use radiant pipes. I think... Uh, that's probably the route I'll go. There is the possibility of doing a thermoregulator, um, but I don't, I don't really want to regulate in that way. And I think that's fair. Uh, so the idea will be just to have it be passive. Um, that means that this is going to be not really require very much power. The only power that it really requires is the. Why do I even have a deodorizer in here? I don't know. Uh, the only power that it's going to require is the auto sweeper to sweep. Uh, fertilizer into the farm tiles and that's it it's it's very 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 easy to to maintain uh well as long as we feed it uh hydrogen uh so the space mission here is out for quite some time the problem i had was oh, was this the save and oh yes there we go the save and load did work so previously because i had broken down the uh spaceship um the spaceship was not found on the space scanner, which then meant I would have to manually open my bunker doors. Uh, something I've proven time and time again, I'm not that great at. I am not that great at. So, uh, having the scanner be able to detect the ship is going to do me a lot of favors. So, the last part of this circuit. Um, we are probably going to be able to get rid of these uh, oxygen tanks. They're not really needed to store oxygen there anymore as we're going to be storing oxygen here instead. So the last part of this is going to be the loop. I, I also might want to feed... Uh, I also might want to feed my hydrogen gas in from the top uh, so that we can do a loop here without really running into anything. Just, just an idea. Uh, uninterrupted space to build would be kind of nice, I, I'd say. Alright, so, in terms of the pressure that's in the in the room here, uh, the more the merrier, but I don't want to drain too much of my hydrogen pressurizing the room. Oh, man. These wheeze warts barely able to keep up with demand here, as you can see. There is, um... How is there 8 kilograms? Doesn't this overpressure... Uh... At much lower pressures? I don't know. Yeah, it does, so I don't, I don't even know. Don't don't ask me. I, I, don't, I don't know. And then if we check... Oh, yeah. Here, here, as you can see, the amount of hydrogen that we have just been draining out. And another issue is we did um, sort of transition away from all natural gas. Now, I have the ability to turn two natural gas generators on, if need be. Um, I'm just sort of thinking about all of the individual little issues that we might have. So, uh, here we go. We have pressurized this area to about 7 kilograms of hydrogen. That's enough to stop anything not hydrogen from outgassing. Uh, it also acts as sort of a thermal battery of sorts. Where the cooler we get it, the better it is. Uh, the petroleum here freezes at negative 70 Fahrenheit. 
Uh, so that's probably not a temperature that we're going to often hit. Uh, I think the last part of this is to insulate it from the top like this so that the pipes can stay out of the way. Let's get that as a high priority construction project. Yes, this is going to temporarily turn off the nullifier, but not for very long. So the idea here is that uh, Oh, uh, those aren't intics. No, 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 don't do that. Um, the idea here is that uh, these gas pipes uh, will take in the oxygen. There we go. And then circulate it until it hits the temperature that we find ideal. Which means radiant. Uh, so thermally reactive materials would be good in this case. Uh, overheat temperature doesn't really matter. Uh, so we could do it at a gold. Uh, as you can see, the Wolframite um, specific heat capacity. Hmm. We could make it out of steel. We have a lot of steel. Why not? So, before I start laying uh, the plumbing, or the piping for it, uh, what I need to do is to sort of figure out how I want this to work. So, it's essentially going to be much like these liquid reservoirs, just it's going to circle back around. So, uh, it's going to look something like this. We're going to have ventilation that comes off of this eventually. Uh, we can have it exit here, like that. Only when it, pa well, maybe not literally right there, but only when it passes the test. The test being that it is the correct temperature. Uh, so the temperature test would be something like a gas shutoff. Um, one and two. And then a gas pipe thermosensor. One and two. Uh, let's see. The gas shutoffs here we'll make out of lead because... Again, it should never reach temperatures that are bad or dangerous or whatever. Alright. And then, if not, uh... If it isn't the right temperature, if it doesn't pass muster, it cycles back around to become cold again. So what we could do is have it cycle... See, this, this is the challenge. Uh, one... Here's 10. I want it to be, or nine rather. I want it to be relatively symmetrical. Uh, so that they cool at the same rates. But I'm trying to think of how to do that. I'll have to like work backwards or whatever. So radiant pipes, four, as you can see, it's going to be tough to keep it, like, true symmetry um, in terms of volume. So maybe I won't even aim for that. I mean, I don't know. Something like that. Right. And then if I wanted them to cool down at the same rates, I could just add insulated pipe. So how much is this? This is 14... 16, okay. Something like that. And then if it is the incorrect uh, temperature, uh, one thing I'm going to want down here, which I did not do, is a bridge so that gas can't, you know, go the wrong way or whatever. And then we're going to want, for the intake, a way to feed it back. So, if wrong temperature, we can also make these radiants and try to make them the same length too. So, eight. Eight. That'll work. Okay. 
something like this. Uh, it seems pretty simple to me. Seems pretty simple. Then the other thing is the shutoffs here are going to require power. And let's go and prioritize that. So we already have the pipes that will take the oxygen in. So then the other problem is um, previously, if you take a look at the automation wires, these were hooked up to basically shut off the oxalizers, or uh, uh, yeah, electrolyzers, not oxalizers. Uh, shut off the electrolyzers if um, these tanks were too full. Right. Uh, I'm going to need that again. That is still very much... Ooh, I don't want to connect there. That's still very much a requirement of this build. Uh, and it just means that I'm going to have some really long run uh, cables. But uh, that's fine. They're made of lead... They're cheap to make. They're really, really inexpensive to make. They're five lead per. Cool. All right. And then that also is part of the project. Well, not, not this ladder. I don't know what that ladder is about. That ladder is not going to exist, is what that's about. Oh, joy, some more coal. We have been dipping into our coal reserves a little bit because I have been powering up things with our coal. Um, if I was really worried about the power, uh, what I could always do, of course, is just shut off my transport tubes because they require... Uh, they are very, very power hungry. They require the vast majority of the power that I'm probably using. Uh, we can check on the cycle reports um, for power usage... Oh, uh, but for yesterday. And that's added. Uh, removed would be the aqua tuner is a lot. Oh, actually, the thermo aqua tuner for the coolant line is the most. And again, if we wanted to fix that, uh, we could retrofit this to use radiant lines instead of the tuner. Um, it might work better. I don't. I don't know. It, w it would be one of these we'd have to experiment. Okay. I'm going to try to coo cool the coolant down a little bit more. And here they go delivering the lead. And that will, that will be all set soon. All right. And then we're also going to want uh, automation wires for the thermal sensors. And I'm going to say if below negative 20 Celsius, which is very, very, very cold. Now, the reason we want it this cold, let me be perfectly clear. The reason for... Oh, I don't want to do that. The reason to have it be this cold is I'm trying to offset all the heat that has been added over time. And uh, I'm not really going to be able to do that with nice temperate air, right? Like, think about an air conditioner in your house. Um, the air conditioner in your house doesn't put out, you know, temperature, like comfortable temperature air when it's hot. Like, it isn't putting out, like, 25C or 70 Fahrenheit air because that wouldn't cool you down. That's just the temperature you want. That's more of a fan and less of an air conditioner. So, I'm going to be cranking out real cold air um, in the hopes that it brings the temperature down in my base that has been creeping up for so long. So then the last bit of this is to figure out how to get my um, oxygen pipes over to where I'm going to want to use oxygen. Ooh, not like that, not like that. 
over to where I want to use oxygen. So these need to come over and connect up here, which is um, which probably means going up. I don't, I don't basic, I basically do not want my oxygen pipes to run through this hot geyser because why subject my oxygen to those temperatures, even if they're in insulated um, tubing? That's it's just too hot. And uh, we're going to need to mine up some more igneous. I think that was on five. Yes, it was. Yeah, for my dupes, this is no problem. Just a, another day mining out the igneous for Rad's crazy build. They don't, they don't even care. They're just like, oh, okay. Another one of these mining projects? Sure. Whatever. All right. Star map. Still some cycles left, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't keep my, uh, my doors clean. I don't want to melt copper. Let's see, temperature. Uh, totally cool. Yep, totally fine. Whatever coolant changes I've made here. Oh yeah, it actually worked. Alright, let's bring this down to 50C. I'm just basically going to keep lowering the temperature threshold until we get to a point where, um, where the coolant is cool again. I mean, it, I mean it's, it's cool compared to space, but it isn't cool in terms of how we want to use it and what we want to do with it. Especially as it's routed through um, the some of the hottest parts of our base. Okay. Taking a look. There is considerable amounts of this project that are just sort of sitting. Hmm. I'm actually going to cancel those because I might change its path just a little bit and I guess I guess what I need to do much like last episode is just to make sure that I have enough igneous to fuel this uh, massive project of mine all right well that looks pretty good As you can see the... Ooh, hello, granite. You don't belong here. What you gotta really make sure is you don't have granite sitting on your weight plate. Because if you have anything besides oxalite sitting on your weight plate, it's gonna disable the oxalite manufacturing, um, you know, improperly or whatever. Uh... Yeah, okay. And this is now set up. Nice. All right, let's see if this makes sense. The oxygen comes in, goes into the storage tank. These storage tanks are going to have high and low threshold marks, just like these ones. So 74, 75, 74, 75. That's what I did over there. That's fine. Um, just so that the... Uh, the electrolyzer doesn't crank out so much that we can't even manage it. And then the gas then goes for a little jaunt up here, checks temperature. If too hot, it gets sent back and just keeps cycles. Just keeps cycles. So, so the reason why you don't want this full up is if they literally fill, if they go 100% full, um, what ends up happening is that you don't get um, oxygen circulation circulation and uh you know temperatures start to stagnate there's also um there's also one little improvement i want to make which will inc involve me breaking these down uh just a little bit again this uh improvement is to prevent uh these from filling up 
So, uh, this would look like this. It would be a ventilation, gas shut off, like that. So that the automation of these also shuts off, because if, th if, if this tank is saying, hey, shut off at 75%, there is still a very high volume left in these tubes, you know, left in these pipes. Uh, so I'm going to want to just shut off the, uh, I'm going to want to just shut off the, the intakes too, so they don't fill up very easily. Uh, did I make this with Igneous? No, Mafic. Uh, no, no thanks. Nope, nope, no thanks. And then these two are just going to be set up with the lead lines. And the same automation wires. Uh, perfect. That one literally is already intersecting the automation wire. So, huh. Don't have to work hard for that. Alright, make sure it's igneous all around. Good. It showed that I had a whole bunch more igneous, so I must have done the mining, and I have. Yep. Proof lies in the pudding. I have done a lot of additional igneous mining. Great. Building entombed. That means that we had strikes, and it does not cover up my uh, my intake, my bay, or whatever you want to call it. That's good. Make sure to keep your plastics clear, or they'll start to heat up. Robo miner did overheat. Uh, that is an indicator that I need to make sure that I have coolant flowing. Oh, coolant. So the coolant right now is uh, just shy of 60C. So let's set it to 60C so that we get coolant flowing out. And yeah, sure, I'll print some ice. That sounds good. Although my storage bin over here is completely full of ice. Uh, in fact... I've had my intake for... Oh, this should be off. I've had my intake uh, for the filtration system closed for a while. Uh, it's fine. They're fine. They won't complain too hard. Okay, so it is getting colder in this room, but not really at the speed I want. Uh, and going at the speed I would like it to go means warts. Wheeze warts. Many, many, many wheeze warts. But uh, I have them being used elsewhere, as you can see. So one of them, some of them, actually these can just uh, deconstruct entirely. There's four here that, they're really not doing anything. Being totally honest, they suck. <laughs> they suck. All right. So this pipe here is going to run... Uh, how to make it the least ugly. Boom, that connects, uh, but I'll probably not have it feed like that. This probably will go to this over here. And then the other one, we'll take the uh, northerly route. And I'm just going to reroute some of the old pipes here just to make it cleaner. That geyser seems to be uh, dormant, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's dormant, so that's why, uh, you know, I can reroute these pipes with no issues. Of course, it does mean that we'll have some igneous get stuck in spots we don't want it stuck. So I might have to make some adjustments, but there we go. Okay, I'm just about ready to pull the trigger on 
feeding oxygen uh, down to this tank, these tanks. So let's go and do that. And let's get those wheeze warts in. There's my four wheeze warts to start. And I'm sure, I'm sure I can find other wheeze warts. In fact, uh, one, why is this? Oh, body temperature got too cold? Oh no, it's still too hot? Oh my god, next to two wheeze warts? <laughs> you joking me? Alright, one, two... Now, if I'm doing proper AC everywhere in the base, three is fine. Because really, any, like, base wheeze wart can then be repurposed, so four. That's all of them. So we're going to have eight wheeze warts in here. Bada bing, bada boom. This geyser has now been rerouted. Is this too high to deconstruct? No, they should be able to get that. That's not too bad. All right, and then this gas pipe here will run across. And connect up. And all of this sort of messy madness, I can fix. Okay, so here we go. We are actually feeding oxygen to our air conditioner. It's, it's a very strange, very fancy air conditioner. But, hey, it's, it's what we wanted. So, uh, the gas shutoffs here... Okay, they do work. Okay, great. And then as, oh, yeah, because it's bridging, that's fine. All of these lines can now be broken down. They're no longer in use. Uh, this hydrogen probably can take a much more sane path now. I'll, uh, I'll take a look at that when I'm able. Because the path that they're on right now does not make a whole lot of sense. Alright, great. Alright, we have the double. Alright, pipe blocked. Why is pipe blocked? Oh, because they're backwards. <laughs> God. All right, I will fix, will fix. Be a little dumb, but I'll fix it. Of course, it happened that they were blocked uh, when it's nighttime. So all of the wheeze warts are now uh, cooking and cranking. Uh, the other thing I might be able to do is just uh, some more temp shift plates. I don't, they're not, they're not super, super necessary, but if I have the diamond, I might as well. And I do think that down here, there's considerable more diamond um, that I might be able to tap into. So, so I'll get it. Let's get it. All right, space. Star map. Yep, we are closing in. So let me dig up this regolith quick. And the gas shutoffs we gotta fix. Because that was that's just embarrassing that I don't know how they work yet. I don't get them going the right direction. So the conductive wires are gonna need to be fixed. And then the automation wires likely need to be fixed as well. They do. And then everything down here fix that cuz i'm embarrassed. Okay, i don't know if oh, yep, here's Triforza. So, i guess we will be able to do this in time. Uh, there we go. 
The ship is being detected. There's nothing on the landing pad. In fact, it is pure vacuum. Well, no, that's not true. There is, uh, there is this. So there's a little bit of, um, a little bit of iron that escaped my gaze. And that might go melting. And then there's, of course, the regolith that I haven't swept up yet. But here comes our astronaut. So if you take a look at this oxygen, as you can see, the oxygen up here is at 40 C, or 40 Fahrenheit, rather. And down here, it's like 60 Fahrenheit. So it is, it drops temperature very, very fast to the point where, like, there's a good point to be made that, hey, maybe we don't actually need an aqua tuner here. But we would need some thermo checks. And that's probably what I need to do for the oxygen as well. Uh, and by that, what I mean is make sure that uh, the oxygen that we feed stuff is the right temperature. And um, because if it's not the right temperature, what ends up happening is, uh, you know, we could... I guess, well, let me try to explain it better. The worry is that we heat up the hydrogen so much that the Weezworts go dormant. That would be the worry. And that's something I would like to avoid. Um, because, you know, the radiant pipes are just making sure that the oxygen and the hydrogen hit equilibrium temperature. And uh, equilibrium temperature could mean way, 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 way too hot. That's that's a possibility. Okay, here we go. Here's the rocket. Has landed. And we have got a magma lamp. Uh, so it gives off some brightness. That's cool. That's very cool. And then, of course, all the data banks that you would expect. Uh, we are going to be making basically the same launch again because there's another 40k launch involved um, but I'm going to wait a little bit to do it I don't think I have enough databanks to finish off a unique cargo but uh, I'll probably let sign curve research for a bit uh, if I have a magma lamp I'm curious oh you know what I could do hmm Uh, yeah, let's do it like this. I would like to, uh, take the ceiling light out and put a magma lamp in. A little retooling here. Okay, so as you can see, this oxygen is almost freezing. And soon... Yeah, there we go. Now, as you you can see, the shutoff has shut off. And when the shutoff shut off, um, these, this oxygen circulates much, much more, more quickly. Uh, the other thing I need to do is to make sure that... Um, that this these automation wires go somewhere, so... This is going to be an important build as well. Some of the old uh, oxygen network doesn't really matter um, all that much, but this stuff does. This stuff here does. Uh, so then that also means that I need to... Probably they're waiting on some more igneous. It's always igneous, right? I'm, I'm really not grabbing the igneous that's easy to grab here. I'm being stubborn and trying to, like, clear it. So this one locked up and got full. But it probably shouldn't have. Well, that's okay. What I can do is I can just have it be like, you know, 10C to start. And then bring the temperatures down as I fine-tune the system. 
I think I think it's just because I messed with the automation line. Uh, the uh, I messed with the line there, and it let in some oxygen when it probably shouldn't have. Okay, so here's the lines. Good. Uh, then this tank here has oxygen in it, but I don't really care. I'm gonna get rid of it. Oh, you know what? We don't even want these tanks at all. Um, not even a little bit. So, yeah, we need to make these tanks obsolete. Um, because we don't want to hold oxygen twice. Ooh, some oxalite. I doubt we'll be able to sweep that where it belongs, but if we just made some oxalite, let's refuel this with oxalite. And let's take a look at the star map. The star map for the interstellar ice. Uh, so this has fullerene, but only trace amounts. It's mostly ice, carbon dioxide, which is frozen, and oxygen. Uh, but you can also capture Wee's wart seeds, right? Which is pretty cool. So a pseudo-renewable source of, of wart seeds. And here, as you can see, the replenishment cycle. Um, it will recycle materials that you mine or extract from here over time. So it is sort of pseudo-renewable. So I think the oxalate we delivered here... Okay, there we go. I think the oxalate we initially delivered there was the oxalate... Um, take some grams. The oxalate that got printed or something. I'm not exactly sure. Okay, there we go. That's full. That should not be there. Now the other issue is that my coolant line might be out of petroleum. Oh no, it's not. Definitely not. Okay, never mind. I take the fact because, of course, uh, we're using we're using the petroleum um, to fuel our ship. So I'm eventually going to run out of coolant because we're taking the hot coolant and and repurposing it. So now uh, I would say what is really 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 important. Is that I get the I get this done um, okay first things first this pipe doesn't need to be so strange and that will reclaim some uh, some actually it's yeah you know it is igneous that will reclaim some igneous uh, this got what happened to the body temperature here it got too hot oh god because another thing that we might be able to do, if need be, is, and I'll show you, if we just, um, this, this would be a very, very temporary thing just for some localized cooling, but if we routed gas where I need cooling the most and then just had a radiant pipe, it would chill the area very, very quickly. The other thing I wanted to do up here is we want to set it up so that, uh, you know, we connect up here. All right, rocket ship. I think they're just not building up there. Uh, is there large... Okay, yeah, there's large deposits here where the oil reservoir is. Okay. That that will be good, good digging. Haha, <laughs> look at all this natural gas that's settled out. And polluted oxygen... And then carbon dioxide. Oh, just very nice gradient there. So pretty. All right, now my oxygen here is below freezing. It's just there's nowhere to put it because these pipes aren't done.
But the igneous rock that I'm mining up and I'm breaking down from other things. Oh, wrangle and remove. I don't really want polluted oxygen to outgas, so I'm going to set that to a much, much, much higher priority. Oh, so here's a really good, good example of the uh, shutoff. Well, no. No, not yet. I'll just leave this on until the shutoff engages. Because this liquid reservoir is now set for a high threshold, so it can't fill up ever. We are definitely building some of these pipes. Now, can we not break these down? Are they too high or something? None of my uh, none of my dupes have have bothered to try. What about that lava lamp? like giving them just too much to work on They're like guy what it it's like I'm sorry just my bad habit all right so the hydrogen here is definitely below freezing uh, but that's mostly just because there's not a lot circulating so I think once it's circulating we're not gonna have hot points uh, but really 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 soon we will have a full connection and then things can start um, moving again It will require this to be connected, though. So this here is kind of important. But we're so close. We are so close. Sorry, jumping around. Uh, Alright, so the petroleum rocket is totally refueled to exactly the specifications we want, and we would go to this rocky asteroid, because we've already, you know, the ice one is fully explored. Um, okay. How is the research coming, though? Oh, it's going good. We are done with all of the simple research. Now it's just left is the databank research. And we have, as you can see, a lot of databanks here. We might be able to get it. I haven't actually cranked out the math, but we might be able to get it. Alright, let's find that magma lamp. You know, to be honest, um... I'm just going to disable the uh, the electric grill for a bit because we have too much food. We have we have a lot of food, and I can just not grill up anything and leave Magenta Fairy to help elsewhere. Okay, here we go. Here is the oxygen feed. Both sides are now feeding oxygen, and this oxygen, uh, I think, especially this oxygen here, will help cool down this farm like instantly to the point where I'm gonna need to fix this pipe like very 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 quick because it's uh in its current state it's going to freeze this very very quickly if I'm not incorrect so if we if we take a look the oxygen here oh my god yes uh it's yeah it's gonna change the temperature of this farm way too fast Which is good. Really, really good. So, yeah, it's already dropped a whole bunch. Because, you know, all you have to do is check, hey, the oxygen coming in is like negative 2C and going out is 21C. That is the temperature shift that's happening in this farm. Which is, you know, more or less what we wanted, but um, it's happening very fast. But that's, uh, that's, that's... So now with all this cold oxygen flowing out, as you can see... Um, you know, this oxygen when it comes out is still, it's still pretty hot. But that's just because the pipes here 
have irradiated, have like absorbed the heat from the surrounding area. Um, hmm. It does mean that the bottom of our base is going to cool off faster than the top. But all cooling is good cooling. So I'll just let this happen. Okay, so it is definitely cooling down in here. As you can see, the millwood is... is okay. And then the other thing is... almost all the oxygen that was in these tanks are... is the right temperature, which is kind of wild. The only worry that I have is the, uh, the heat buildup. You know, will the Weezworts be able to keep up? But so far, the answer is yes. That works for me. All right, sign curve. Even though you're not done researching, I'm going to send you on yet another mission. So that's uh, that's basic AC, and and this AC system really isn't requiring much. It, you know, 40 watts, about 40 watts. You know, only when the auto sweeper is moving does it require more. So it is very very in inefficient or um inefficient. It's a very efficient for power uh, AC system. And that's pretty cool. Pun fully intended and shamelessly used. Um, all right, taking a look around. Yeah, we're about to hit uh, the correct temperature here. Just a little bit more radiant piping. And it will. And then the curiosity here is, why did this heat up so much in the first place? You know, what was the source of heat? Um, maybe the auto sweeper itself? You know, who really knows? I, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't need to do a full breakdown. I just know it needs cooling. Uh, so you... Oh yeah, here's a great example. The... Um... Oh no, this isn't full yet. 90% of 5,000, I think is what that is. So 90% 90 of 5,000 is 4,500. So once this hits 4,500 water, uh, it will shut off so that it can circulate. But just for proof of concept, let's set it to 80. So at 80, uh, it will shut off the liquid shutoff here. Even though the switch is green, it won't take in any more water, allowing the water here to circulate, and this water is already ready to dump. So, just a reminder, this is a fail-safe so it doesn't fill up, but that doesn't mean I don't flip the signal switches. I still flip the signal switches. I just wanted to make that, you know, perfectly clear that this, you know, it isn't, um... It isn't switchless. Oh, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. He's probably sitting on the... <laughs> Sit in the ship going, uh, when? Excuse me, hello? You're supposed to be paying attention to me. Yeah, you're right. Okay, off we go. On yet another space-bound adventure. My cold oxygen. Oh, it feels good. Feels good. And it actually is a... Oh yeah, here we go. Body temperature. Boom. It's gotten nice and cold. Now my glossies will be able to eat again. How's that magma lamp? Does it actually produce the light that I would want? Uh, what is the light level? No. <laughs> it's just a teeny little light. Yeah, I should have saw. I should have looked at it and been like, mm, Yeah, I mean, I see the radius. And no, that's not going to work. Uh, what would that work on, though? I'm just sort of curious. I can leave it there. I don't know. I can leave it there. Uh, but it would, what I do need to do if I want to get cooking again, which I do eventually. Um, let's let's just have complicated cooking. How's that sound? Come on. Someone destroy it. It's, it's priority nine. Oh, they're all going to sleep. <laughs> okay. 
Do I still have petroleum in my coolant line? I do. Which is actually surprising, given how much I've refueled. Because if I ever want to add more petroleum to the coolant line, I do have a uh, valve for that. It's this valve. Is it this valve? No, it's this valve right here. That would, um, that would introduce more petroleum into the coolant line so that we have more coolant. But at the moment, I don't really seem to need it. Surprisingly, the hydrogen is really holding up. This oxygen, because it's not very dense, is very easy to remove heat from. You know, if it was a solid or a liquid, it'd be a lot harder. But as a gas, you know, it's not as bad. And the correct body temperature is now spreading, as you can see. So I'm obviously doing that right. And one of the other hidden benefits from this is... Um, the Weezworts that I have left in this base, I'll be able to spot treat. And by that I mean, uh, I won't need Weezworts spread around the base to deal with all the temperature. Oh, there we go. Um, so I'll be able to just put them where it's hottest, instead of like, have to constantly place them or whatever. Uh, here I'm putting in a weight plate. Totally unnecessary, but I just, you know, why not? Uh, so basically when we cook, uh, when we cook, the light will turn on or off. I believe, and I'm sure some of you know the answer, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe if you do a weight plate on the electric grill, what ends up happening is the duplicate will always see the grill as off, so they'll never really grill. So you shouldn't weight plate the grill itself. But um, now that this is done, if you see someone walk on this weight plate, the light will turn on. So it's, yeah, there we go. Perfect example. So it will only turn on while we cook, which is a way to save power. Uh, not a whole lot of power because it's like, what is it, 10 watts? Yeah, 10 watts. <laughs> it's, it's really not a lot, but, um, you know. It also produces heat over time. Oh, yay, look, it's spreading. And then there might be there might be the case where I want to radiant plate this as well, um, a radiant pipe rather, that as well. I've got to say it is remarkably easy to cool down this oxygen. It just basically passes right on through. It's coming in at one forty four Fahrenheit and exiting at um, negative or 20 Fahrenheit. It's not really heating up the hydrogen all that much. It Almost to the point where I might actually have to remove Weezworts. I'm actually a little worried about it getting too cold because our minimum here would be the temperature of the petroleum. When the petroleum drops to about negative 70 Fahrenheit, it becomes a solid and this liquid gate no longer works. And uh, it does seem like that could happen, which is sort of hilarious to me. That I, I made it, I made my AC too strong. But that's, that's fine. Better too strong than too weak. And coolant is still flowing through. Let's check up top in space. Do we have any temperature issues at present? No. It's warmish, but no. Alright, fantastic. Well, guys, that was... The simplest version of the AC system. Um, if I wanted to make it a little bit more complicated, I could change this to be... To be even colder temperatures. And that way, to be able to offer even more cooling. Uh, but basically, it can only really hit the temperature of the ambient hydrogen. So right now, the ambient hydrogen is actually like negative 5C. So that is as cold as it's going to get. But, you know, essentially... The oxygen will match the hydrogen's temperature, and then the hydrogen, uh, you know, and then that is how much cooling that we can provide to the base. The other issue that I can see up here is um, that some of these suits aren't getting oxygen. 
but I don't believe it's for a lack of. Um, I'm I'm actually not even entirely sure why that is. If I'm going to be perfectly honest, um, maybe because the system was off for a little too long, and it fell behind. I think that's why. If I was to guess. And in that scenario, all I really need to do is just leave this running, and it will catch back up. Oh, perfect. Copious free time is now idle, and that seems to me the perfect time to end this episode. So if you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the AC setup or have ideas for improvements, I'm all ears. Uh, next episode, I think what we're going to do is try to sort of fully polish the AC system so it's working exactly how we want it, maybe fine tune it, um, possibly start working towards the volcano taming, uh, but I'm just gonna let you know that the volcano taming is gonna be very, very simple, uh, just ahead of time, so I don't want you all disappointed. It's, I'm, I don't mean to be building it up, I've just been putting it off because I don't really need gold. Thank you for watching, I'll catch you all next episode. Farewell, everybody.